I didn't understand for a long time open source. You're gonna like work on this project and then just give it away? Like I don't understand. And now I get it because you'll have one piece of an idea but you don't have time or you don't have the know-how to do all of it. Well, other people do and they can just like work on the little piece that they like. And that's fun. It's this way to like create something bigger. That's so exciting. That's a community that I want to be a part of. The class I'm teaching here that makes the heaviest use of GitHub is the software engineering course. And one of the big topics that we focus on in the class is how you build interesting software as part of a small team. It's no longer the case that sort of the lone genius working in isolation is going to produce the next brilliant piece of software. Our final project for the course is a group project where there's six of us per group. Sometimes we'll be working in the same room together. Sometimes we'll be working at the same time but in different locations. It's just a way to get rid of this geographical coincidence that we don't live in the same place. It's not really important to the work that we're doing, so why should it define the way that we have to work together? We actually went around and asked developers and engineers at a number of leading software companies, including Google, Amazon, eBay, Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter, you name it. What are we missing? What are the skills that you're looking for in competitive hires? One of the biggest things they said was learning to work in teams and learning to work with an external customer. We really reinvented the course largely along the lines of what they said. We use Git and GitHub extensively as the coordination point for the team projects where students are working with a real external customer, typically a nonprofit. You're working on a group project for a client, and so you're really in a real world situation. It's really different and a unique experience to have that in school. It's one thing to do well in an interview, and it's a whole different thing to actually have code that works, that's readable, that's well commented, that's well documented. So that's one thing I appreciate about this class in particular, is that the project that we're working on has to be open source. And so I finally have stuff on my GitHub repo that I've written that people can see. So even though in my class, we ask the students to put their software project into public repos, we also tell the students, you should get the free micro account. It's a valuable tool. It's a tool that they're gonna use throughout their CS career. And in my opinion, the earlier they start getting familiar with this, the better. You're only as good as the tools you use. So one way to make sure that your code is of higher quality is to allow a lot of eyeballs to look at it. We've had students from all over the world fork the repo of the tools that we use to build our course, because we've chosen to make those tools open source and a lot of them are sort of voluntarily contributing back improvements. Students that I've never met personally, but they just said, hey, I was in your course, and I thought that I would make these improvements to your tools. I think it's undervalued how important a part of the open source community that is. This philosophy where software can be more open, if it doesn't need to be secret, let's have a lot of eyeballs look at it. It's better to catch problems early. It's better to get critiques from your colleagues before the software hits production. There's a big difference between reading a textbook and looking at the code versus actually using all those tools yourself, checking in the code, deploying your app, and being able to get instant feedback on the quality of your code and whether it's correct and whether your test coverage is good. It's not a bunch of people reading a textbook, it's a bunch of people actually able to learn by doing. I think that's the reason it's a game changer.